Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Flowmotion. Today we will take a look at the new 3D features within After Effects. Because a lot has changed here and After Effects is really doing huge steps, so we will soon be able to create super realistic compositions. Speaking of soon, here is a sneak preview of my next tutorial that I'm preparing at the moment. And as you can see, this will totally build upon what we will learn today. And yes, everything you see here is done in After Effects. No plugins, lit as well as rendered. So stay tuned for that. Or even better, subscribe so you do not miss it. And now you know why it makes total sense to follow this tutorial today without any distraction. And if you watch until the end, I will also show you where you can get 3D models for free and how to photo scan your own 3D assets like in my example. But let's start from scratch. Create a new composition 1920 by 1080 which is full HD and hit OK. Let's start with a white solid. Make it 3D, rotate it and scale it up. So we have a floor that simply goes into the distance. And to still keep it simple, let us start with 3D text. Let's take the text tool, type in 3D and make it gray so we can see it on the white background. Hey, and also enable 3D for it. So far, so good. But while we have enabled 3D, a few things have changed. When you take a look down here, we have the advanced 3D automatically selected. And when I switch back to the old one, you can directly see that I get default shading on my object instead of, well, well, nothing. So let's directly go one step ahead and extrude the text. So we do not only have flat cards here, and we can do that by going to the geometry options within our text layer. And we can just play with them well until we are happy. And this already looks cool, but 90s cool. So we need to improve on that. And as you may have seen when we selected the render engine, there are also render settings down here, also for shadows. And that's the kind of cool that I want. But how? Well, for that we need to create a new light and this is where all the magic happens. Because we are now able to use 360 degree HDR images to lighten up our scene. Hmm. What does that mean? So HDR stands for high dynamic range, which basically means we have all brightness information from the deepest black beneath our bed to the brightest sunlight. And I will show you what that means in just a minute. But again, let's start simple and simply create a new light and choose the environment light. And of course we want it to cast shadows. So here we go. And now the render settings really make sense as we can now increase the quality for smoother shadows. Okay, we are getting somewhere. Slowly, but okay. At least we are going forward. But first let's work on our material options because as I always say, reflections make things look better. For example, gold without reflections is just a yellow stone. So in the material options, we can play with the shininess and also the metal option. Both of them work in combination. Hey, and if you want to intensify all of this, you can use the specular intensity. Now let's check out the light. Our source is set to default at the moment. So let's work on that because default is not the best choice for creativity. We can only choose the default. No, no, not true. As I told you, we can use an HDR image as a light source for our light. So here I have one. It's a 360 degree image of a studio, as you see here. And if I take this exposure slider and play with it, you can see that there really is a lot of brightness values in there. If you, for example, take a look at the really hot light source, as if I would dim the light instead of just making the whole image darker. And a super cool trick you can do now, and we will also do that later. Simply apply the environment effect to it and also add a camera. Now you are in 3D space in this image. Super cool. Okay, but let's not get distracted. Back to our main comp. So we drag out our HDR image into there and can now finally select it in our light settings as our new source. 
and we have left the 90s and are back in the here and now. Our 3D text is lit by the studio and casting shadow accordingly. We can even see the studio in the reflections. Hey, and if we do the environment effect trick again, we can orbit around our scene, which was indeed super easy to set up. So let's maybe quickly choose a different HDR file. This one from an outdoor evening. And you see how this drastically affects the overall look of everything. Really, no need to make any compositing adjustments to match back and foreground, because the foreground is lit with the background. And hey, have you realized how fast this is? So for all you Element 3D users out there, yes, it is that fast. And if it's not fast enough, we can click on that draft button. Now this is the perfect mode to work in for animations and so on. Before we render in super high quality. And we can also add a grid here, which comes in super handy and also see what's outside of the frame with this button, which is just perfect for 3D scenes. Okay, now let's bring in some real 3D objects. And as promised, I'm going to show you where you can find those. First, if you have your Adobe account also set for stock assets, you can use the Adobe library and search for 3D assets. Maybe a car. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's use this van here. Once downloaded, you can import the OBJ file into your project and into the same comp. For the object scale, let's make it comp size and hit OK. And voila, we have a realistic looking van with realistic lights on it. Oh, and you can also add the text or any other 3D object or layer to it. And they will interact as well as cast shadows onto each other. Hey, and also as promised, here's where you can get free assets. There are many spots on the internet, but I got some of mine from Sketchfab. You just have to sign in, which is totally free and you are good to go. So here is how I do it. For each project that I'm working on, I'm always using at least one paid asset because hmm, someone has created those. Thank you. So let's maybe download this computer here and a GLB file is just perfect. As at the moment, those as well as the OBJ that we have used before for the van are the preferred files for After Effects. Also import it and maybe switch back to the studio setup. And you see how that studio is now reflecting in our monitor? Perfect. So the last thing I want to show you today is how you can photo scan your own assets. For that, I use an app called Polycam. What you need to do for this to get it working is to take a lot of pictures of the asset you want to scan from various angles and positions so the app can get a sense of the depth of the asset. So as you see, I have taken 251 images and now let's just process them in the app, which can take a few minutes. And now you can also fine tune it within the app. Hey, and voila, here is your 3D asset that you can again download as a GLBT file and import into After Effects. And this is where we will end this today. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that awesome bell to get notified when the next full 3D scene tutorial will come out. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun in the third dimension. Yeah.